Eric Trump is here, the, the, the fair-haired brother. And I want to talk about Donald Trump and, and his approach to politics from the spectrum of your business arrangements in Washington, D.C. and in Virginia. You, you, Trump is very big yeah. in our area, in our region. you got the winery and the whole resort down in, uh, in Charlottesville, right? That's right. Uh, but then let's talk about the hotel. I mean, I, you, you can make the case here that your company's handling and your dad's handling of the old post office on, on Pennsylvania Avenue and the conversion of the hotel is a good example of getting things done where government can't get it done. Yeah, and there's been a million examples of that. I mean, the old post office is a great example, right? So right on Pennsylvania Avenue is this amazing building. They, they had talked, Congress had talked for years about ripping the building down, which would have been a huge travesty. It's one of the most spectacular buildings anywhere in the world. It'll be the number one hotel when we're done with it anywhere in the country. I mean, it's really that good. It's really that amazing of a structure. And they were talking about tearing it down, and it was kind of underutilized. And we went in there, and we worked very closely with the GSA, and we, you know, we said, listen, we want to do a world-class hotel, and we want to do it on Pennsylvania Avenue. I mean, something that is so incredible. We built ballrooms in the building for you know 1,200 people. I mean, it is such an unbelievable building. And you see the, the bones of it, where you have these 15-foot-tall ceilings and these massive rooms. I mean, it's just a spectacular structure. And, you know, in a very quick time, we went in there. You know, we, we, we struck a deal and we got the thing done. And, you know, by the end of the year this year, it's going to be open. And I think it's going to open and it, it's going to be such an amazing So your dad's, icon. your dad's inaugural will be at his own hotel. Which is nice, Two doors right? down. Two, 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 two Brian, doors down. can you imagine? Yeah, I, I'm just sort of curious. I mean, I'll, I promise I'll get back to the campaign for a moment. But, I mean, that, that building has a lot of really interesting uh, history to it. As you have gone through and stripped it out, have you found anything that was surprising to you? Well, I mean, everything. It's, uh, you, obviously, you have a clock tower. It's the tallest structure in, in Washington, D.C., right right after the, the Washington Monument. So, I mean, and it's the capital. It, yeah. It's just a, uh, it's a spectacular place, and it was built a very long time ago. I mean, it was the old postmasters, you know, really kind of, um, you know, it's the, the main post office for the country at the time. So it's just an amazing building. All right, so the campaign is underway. Why in the world would the Trump family, I mean, it's, uh, many people wonder, you got everything in the world you could possibly want. Why yeah. would you want to go down this path and go through what is a grueling, grueling experience? Yeah, well, this country's given my family everything. It's given my father everything. And you see what's happening in Washington, and it's really disheartening. I mean, we just passed $19 trillion worth of debt. We're going to go to $21 trillion. We're doing $150 billion deals with Iran. Two days later, they're going and buying, you know, airplanes from Airbus and not Boeing. I mean, what's happening to our country is just unrivaled. We're going to bankrupt our, our nation. Um, it's really sad. We have an educational system in this country that's you know, ranked 28 in the world. Uh, we have wounded warriors who are the greatest guys in the world, and they're not you know, men and women in the world, but they're not being treated well. They're not being taken care of. We have massive problems with illegal immigration. I mean, we've got some serious problems as a country, and no one's doing anything about it. Let's talk about national security for a second, because uh, you're right. I mean, I think the American people are so fed up with, uh, with this administration apologizing for America and getting basically walked all over by other countries. But there's a concern about your dad. Obviously, he doesn't have that national security experience. I understand he's dealt with foreign governments for business purposes, but it is different. And and we wonder what kind of people will he appoint. Usually at this point, we look at the other candidates. We know what kind of circles they work in, and we know what kind of advisors they have. We can get an idea of who their national security advisor might be, who their secretary of state might be. Can you give us an idea of what Donald Trump, uh, who what, Donald Trump would appoint? Well, what, what, what have those advisors gotten us? I mean, two weeks ago, we had a, a boat full of you know young soldiers that were held high hostage off the coast of you know, Iran. They had guns pointed to their heads while they're on their knees, you know, knees effectively, you know, well, yeah, begging. I mean, yeah, these current guys what, are, are what, lousy. What kind of people do we have in there right now? I mean, the one thing I'll say about my father, he's the toughest guy in the world. You know, that will not happen in his administration. He is a tough guy. And the other thing is you don't build an amazing business empire without surrounding yourself with unbelievable people. And that's what he'll do. And it's so sad to me. And I went to Georgetown and I lived in Washington, D.C. and I love the city. And you, you run by the Pentagon and you run by all these amazing, the Lincoln Memorial and everything. And this is the epitome of strength in the world. And then you see some of the nonsense where we're sailing an aircraft carrier and they're shooting missiles right next to it just to aggravate us. I mean, what are we allowing to happen yeah. to this country? Well, get that. But I guess, I guess again, your, your dad can't occupy every seat in the cabinet. You know, would he look at a John Bolton for Secretary of State? Would he look at a General Petraeus for a national security advisor? Yeah, he, he would get the strongest people. And by the way, that's not just militarily. I mean, believe me, he, he talks about Patton every single day, right? Why don't we have that Patton <laughs> that will, you know, and by the way, it's not that we don't have him. It's just our military leaders who are amazing guys, their hands are tied by our politicians, you know, and, and, and it's really sad. But you need that not just in terms of military, you need that in terms of energy, right? Why don't we have the best guy in the world taking care of our, you know, of energy? 
you know, why don't we have the best people in the world, the toughest negotiators in the world, negotiating with China and Mexico and Japan and Korea and all these places that are totally ripping us off? I mean, right now we have a $550 billion trade deficit with China. All of our jobs are going overseas, and it's a really sad thing. You know, he is a tough guy, and he comes across as a tough guy, but I've, I've sort of been... I've sort of been bemused a little bit about his reluctance to be on the same stage with Megyn Kelly. What is that all about? <laughs> <laughs> Megyn Kelly. The, the, the famous Megyn Kelly. He, you know, he's the toughest guy in the world. Um, he's also the sweetest guy. I mean, he's, he's my father. He's taught me everything I know. He's, he's just a, he's a, he's a great man. He's a great man, but he's also his principal, right? I mean, sometimes you know, need to know when to walk away from a deal. That's kind of negotiating 101. You need to know when to walk away from a deal. and. You know what happened with that whole situation? They were trying to make politics into a soap opera, and it was um, mm. it, it was it was kind of sad. And hey, we walked away. We raised six million dollars for vets. It was an amazing night. And, well, um, I mean, I know, I know you walked away from it, and he thinks it was the right thing to do at the time. But in retrospect, was it the right thing to do given what what happened in Iowa? Well, listen, we came in second in Iowa. I mean, this is a guy who entered the race five months ago, right? I mean, we're, yeah. we're as green as – I mean, that's a huge victory for us. You know? He's I mean, never I, run for anything before. He spent less than the other people. No, I, I think you're right with that. Can I ask you one last question? Because you raised trade and tariffs. You know, your dad says that he wants to raise tariffs for Mexico, for Asia, you know, Ford. If they build down there, they're going to get charged 35%. Let's face it. That means if I'm buying a Ford, I'm paying that. That's not a tax on Ford. That's a tax on me because Ford, you know business, Ford's going to pass that on in the price. By the way, he's not saying he will do that. He's saying that if these countries continue to devalue their currencies to rip us off, right, and to cause us to lose all our jobs and all our manufacturing, that's what he'll do. I mean, you know, he's a big free trader, but he's also a big fair trader. And what's happening right now is not fair trade. You see the boats that come into, you know, New York City, right? They, They come into the harbor. Right. When they come in, they're effectively touching the water. When they leave, they're effectively touching the bridges that they're going out under. Right. I mean, right. they're only sending goods into the country. We're not sending anything back. That's not free trade. All right. You know, that's not fair trade. All right. Eric Trump, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. And give your best to Ivanka for us. Yeah. I will. Yeah. I will. Nine t- months tell pregnant. Tell them to come see us. All right. Yeah, we will. <laughs> it's 844.